Hey everyone, I'm putting together some drawing videos for while we're off. Uh, today we're going to draw an elephant. We're going to use a number two pencil, a 2B, and a ebony pencil along with a blending stub. If you don't have a blending stub, it's okay. I'll show you later in the video how to make one. Um, just have fun and I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, today we're going to draw an elephant and we're going to start off finding a structure with some basic shapes and then we're going to work on our shading. Here we go. So we're going to start with the head, and the head for our elephant is this kind of this nice rounded egg shape. There's some peaks to it here and there. So we'll start off with something like this. And his shoulder area comes down like this and circles back up under his chin here. And then we'll give him a little bit of a, a backbone, and that goes like this. And there's this big, round, oval shape back here. Okay. And then he needs some legs. So we're going to start by just kind of drawing a line down like this. Drawing kind of a rectangular shape here. That leads into this one. And down like this and to this foot shape and we'll come back up here and we'll get his front leg and it's going something like this and we'll start with this kind of shape here remember as you work you're just looking for the basic shapes of things you're not looking for any details yet um, it's just kind of rough. We'll go back and neaten it up here in a little bit. And his back leg. So this one comes down quite a bit like that. And there's another one here that comes like this. So he's kind of got his, his back side kind of tucked under him here. And we're going to go, we're going to draw the leg in the front first. Just some basic shapes again. And his foot. Make sure the feet kind of meet at the same point on the ground. Now is the time if you have any changes to make to make them. Alright, and that one comes down like this. So because I think I didn't make this leg long enough, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make the adjustment now with my eraser. And we're just going to extend that down a little bit like that. Okay. He's got a little tail back here. We'll put that in real quick. And we'll go back up to his head and out where his trunk goes. His trunk we're going to break down into shapes also. So there's this piece that kind of comes out like this and it curves around on the inside like something like that. And remember to keep all these lines fairly light so you can erase them. Uh, you want to start off with your 4H pencil. I started off with an HB pencil just so you can see it better on the film. And comes back around like that and he's got a little his mouth is open here something like that okay so that's the first part now we need to go through and we need to get rid of some of these finding lines our little structure lines they're kind of in our way so we're going to erase those uh, we don't need these here in the trunk either so we're going to get rid of all those lines remember if you keep them light, this part's much easier. So now we're going to go back and we're going to do a little bit of contour drawing. We're going to fill in some of these gaps. And we're going to try to neaten up our drawing a little bit. And we're going to go around the contour of our elephant. And normally we wouldn't want to just outline the whole thing. But our elephant here is, he's a big gray shape. He's got a lot of mid-tone grays. 
So if we outline lightly, then it'll work out in this case. If he had a lot of lighter areas, then you'd want to think about kind of using a broken line here and there. He's got this little eye. Elephants have relatively small eyes for their head. And he's got some wrinkles kind of around his eyes. So we'll put a few of those in now just to kind of hold the place there. And we're going to go back and we're going to work on the trunk a little bit. Again, kind of lightly outlining, filling in gaps. You want to follow the contour really closely with your eye as you're drawing. Look back and forth at your subject often. So that you find all those little things that, that make our elephant look like our elephant here. And I think I'm going to move this leg. I think I'm going to move the whole leg. How about that? We're going to move that whole leg down or like this. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to redraw a couple structure lines real quick. And there we go. That's better already. That comes like that. This comes out like this. So at any point during this process, if you need, feel like you need to move something, go ahead and move it. It's not written in stone. You can always come back and change it. Okay. I'll get rid of those tiny lines in there now. And we'll come back out here to his foot a little bit. Bottom of his foot is this ellipse shape. We're going to go like that. Give him some toenails while we're here. All right. And we're going to come back through here into this leg. This leg curves like this, in and out. Down like that. And again, kind of remember to make sure that these feet are standing roughly on the same plane. This one comes down just slightly more than the back one. And we'll keep going right along like that. Alright, so now we're going to move back up this way. And our elephant's looking a little skinny here, so we're going we're gonna to give him a little more belly through there. And this leg comes up like this. There's a couple wrinkles here. comes down like this again. Be really careful and follow all those contour lines with your eyes so you get all the shapes nice and right. And we'll come around like this for this one. Here, this one needs to come out just a little bit further. Tucks in, curves down just like that, and it disappears kind of behind this foot. <coughs> Back up here along the spine. This is all pretty good through here. And then it curves out just a little bit more like that. And we'll go back and revisit the tail. Okay, so he still needs an ear and that's going to go about here. This, I think, judging by the size of his ears, is probably an Asian elephant. Asian elephants ears are smaller than African elephants. Their head's a slightly different shape too. But it's a little harder to see what the shape of his forehead is in our reference picture. So we're just going to kind of assume that this is an Asian elephant for now. And there's some more finding lines we want to take out before we start to shade. Alright. This is the last chance to kind of go through and make sure we get all these little extra lines out. Once we start to shade, we'll kind of get 
in there and we won't be able to get them out. So, Alright. So the next part will be shading. Okay, so now we're ready to start the shading part. So if you have them at home, you'll need number two pencil. Um, this is an HB pencil, this is your number two school pencil. That'll work fine. Um, if you happen to have them at home, you could use a 2B and an ebony pencil to do most of your shading. And then if you have them, if you have a blending stub at home, that would be a great thing to use too. You can use your finger if you don't. And you can make one. This is just a rolled up piece of uh, drawing paper. You roll it in a cone shape and you tape it along the edge here. And it works just the same. I'll, I'll include in the end here how to do that. So here we go. I'm going to start with my HP pencil. It's the lighter of the three that we just talked about. And I'm going to start to block in some basic shapes. And remember, shading is just shapes too. The main difference is between doing shading and structural drawing. Structural drawing is what we just did. We did a contour drawing too. But when you start to develop your shadows, you're still going to look for shapes. The difference is going to be is those shapes are going to be filled in. They're going to be a light gray, a medium gray, or maybe a dark gray. And they fade in and out of each other. So you might have one shape that's kind of this triangle shape like this, and it's real dark, and then it fades in to this other little shape that kind of bends around like this. But you're still just making shapes. You don't want to outline them. You want to use the flat of your pencil and occasionally the tip of your pencil to get into small areas. But you're filling them in. And you're looking for the value that that shape is made up of. How gray is it to you? Snack, here's this nice dark shape here and as we come out of that shape it starts to kind of go like this and lighten up. Remember to try to follow the contour of the form that you're shading and that way if your pencil sh marks show they'll add to your drawing instead of taking away from it. Okay, So if the form feels like it's going like this we don't necessarily want our shading to go like that because it wouldn't feel like it fit. All right, so we're going to keep going here. We're going to work our way down here on his leg, and there's a darker shadow here. And we really don't need to know why those shapes are there, what's causing them. What we need to do is look really, really closely at our reference and keep looking back and forth so we don't start making things up. When we stop looking back and forth between our reference picture and our drawing is when we start to kind of imagine what things are going to look like. And if we're trying to do a realistic drawing, that doesn't always work out very well for us. Okay. So this is kind of a middle value through here. I'm just going to kind of shade that in a little bit. back up here to the head real quick. We're getting a little far away. And remember to put most of your detail where you want the viewer to look. Where the most <clears throat> where the most, most interest is. So for the most part everyone wants to look at the elephant's head. So we'll try to concentrate most of our efforts up here. If you need to turn your page, go ahead. You can twist it and turn it whichever direction you want, whatever's more comfortable for you. And we'll do a little bit as you're here.
Then we'll move on to the bigger shapes in this back for a little bit. Try to remember to kind of work over the whole drawing at once. That way you don't end up with one area that's completely finished and then you have to go back and try to match up your drawing. forms, follow those contours, come down like this, nice dark shadow in here, we're not trying to go to black yet, we're just trying to get our nice wide range of values in the middle, okay, you don't want to go to your darkest darks yet, And we can always erase out some highlights if you feel like you've kind of overdone an area. This shape here comes like this. Ties kind of into this one softly. A little shadow there. And then we'll kind of start coming back down through here. So there's a little darker area in here. Now I've done pretty much all of this with my HP pencil so far. You can always switch if you feel like you're not getting dark enough to a 2B or your ebony pencil. But with a 2 HP pencil or a number 2 pencil you should be able to get quite a range out of it. So if that's all you have at home, just by pushing a little bit harder with it and gradually building things up, you can get a nice range of values out of just a regular number two school pencil. A couple of details here with his toenails. Okay, now I think he needs a little shadow underneath him here to kind of <clears throat> anchor him to the page, so I'm just going to put this under here. And we want it darkest right under him, like this. And then as it comes out away from him, it can get a little bit lighter. And we can give it a little bit of a kind of a halo effect here by getting lighter out here. Alright. And come back up here to zero a little bit. A little more shading here on his trunk. Tail's kind of dark through here. Right. So from there, we're going to switch to our next darkest pencil and our blanket stub. Okay, so now we're going to go to our 2B pencil or an ebony pencil. Either one of those will work fine. If you don't have one of those, you can always go back to your number two pencil and just try to work up a little bit darker. Um, gradually build it up. Okay. You also, if you have a blending stub, we can use a blending stub. That'll help a lot. We can use our finger. I'll show you how to use both of those. And we also have, I have an needed eraser. If you don't have an needed eraser, you can use a white vinyl eraser or one of the pink pearl erasers. Um, try not to use the eraser on the end of your pencil too much because sometimes it leaves pink marks behind. But if that's all you have, use it. Right, here we go. So I'm going to start first with the blending stub a little bit. And this will do a lot of work for me. And it's just going to kind of come in here and even out. So I don't see how it's taking the scratchiness away from all my pencil marks. And as you work with it, it starts to carry the, the pencil around the page. So you can, you can come in here to this white space and add just a little bit of gray if you want to, just from what was already on your pencil or, or blending stub. back in a few minutes and start to add a few more details like some wrinkles and folds. But right now we just kind of want to build up the overall values of our elephant. 
So again, I'm trying to use that idea that I'm following the contour with my shading. And you can see that that just really quickly gave me some wrinkles along the trunk. I can come back and darken some of these shadows and deepen them a little bit. Just by blending them into the paper and get rid of all the white spaces. Remember, even at this point, you want to keep looking at your reference photo. If you're not looking at your picture, <coughs> your reference picture, or your subject, you're not going to have it look the way you want in the end. So look at your subject often. So now I'm coming through here. And I was using a lot of pressure. I was pushing really hard on my blending stub when I was doing these dark areas. And now I want to start to transition that into some lighter values. So I'm not going to push as hard. I'm not going to try to make the graphite go as far as I was a minute ago. The same thing in here. I'm not pushing quite as hard. These darker areas I'll start to push harder. Sometimes you have to push really hard. Like here, I might want this to get really dark, so I'm going to push really hard. Okay, and then lighten up as I come out of that and into here. I'm not going to worry about too many details at this point. I might add a little bit of shadow under his foot here. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to kind of work my way down through the leg here. And that kind of ties together in there a little bit. And then on down like this. And down into his foot. Nice dark area here, so I'm going to push hard again to make that blend together and, and get nice and dark. Bring some of that this way so it feels like he's, he's curving around like that. Okay. So I've done most of all of this with the blending stem. Up here I'm going to use a little bit of my finger. You can see it doesn't work quite the same. It's a little bit softer, more diffused look. Um, it also, because my finger is bigger than my blending stub, it blends those areas together very quickly. Okay, and then we'll switch back to our blending stub through here. Now, if you're lucky and you have smaller fingers, you can get your finger in here and not make a big mess. If I get my finger in there, I might make a big mess. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of the blending stub. Okay, and we're gonna turn it one more time. Come in here and really kind of burnish the paper in our shadow. All right. And now, I'm gonna come back with my kneaded eraser. Remember, if you have a kneaded eraser, if you need it a few times, it softens up and it works better. Um, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna look for some places where I think maybe I got a little bit too dark and I wanna lighten some things. Maybe I lost some shapes while I was blending. Yeah, up here, he needs a nice little highlight on his back here. And if you think you went too far, just give it a little rub with your finger, with your blending stub, and you can put some gray back into it. A little highlight there. He definitely needs a highlight out here. And I think that's good. Maybe a little bit of something through there. Definitely some places up here. There. Now, if some of these lines are starting to look like they're still too dark where we outlined, we can come back and we can erase some of those just kind of lightly to break them up a little bit. Now I'm going to come in with my 2B pencil and I'm going to start to darken up some of my shadows. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to start to put in some folds and wrinkles. Okay, they don't have to be a lot. 
just kind of adds a little texture to our elephant. Put uh, some horn here while it will make his eye a little bit darker too. There, go ahead and erase it out. And back to his ear here. If you feel like you need to turn the paper, it's okay to turn the paper. trying to darken up some of those areas. Pick out a few details. All of these are wrinkly so we can put a few wrinkles in here. If they're not quite in that exact spot that's okay. Every elephant's a little bit different. I'm going to darken this line up back here and make, sure, make it feel a little bit more like it's in shadow. If the line in front's a little bit lighter, it feels like the light's hitting it a little bit more. Just kind of take our needed eraser and tap along that. Same thing here, we're going to darken this line up. That's going to give that leg a feeling of weight on that side. Define some of those toenails a little bit. There's a little bit of a shadow in here and there. Give him a few wrinkles there. I think he needs to be a little happier. We'll do that. And we'll come in and do this one side here. Go a little bit darker. That comes down like that. Darken the shadow up a little bit. Again, using the side of your pencil. If you get in there with the tip of your pencil too much, you start to make dents in the paper. And you'll get really dark areas and, and then you'll kind of skip over them and it won't look as nice. So try to use the flat of your pencil as much as you can. Sometimes you need to switch. That's okay. Putting a few wrinkles in here. I'm going to darken this line up to the same idea. The thicker or darker a line is, it adds visual weight. So we want to feel the elephant to feel like he's leaning back like that. So by darkening this line up a little bit, it's going to add that visual weight without adding a whole bunch of shading. There's his tail. And we'll come back to his ear just a little bit here and put a little bit, a little bit more in there. Same thing with this trunk, we'll darken this line up a little bit through here, and this one. Alright, and I think we'll go one last time through with our blending stub, just to kind of get rid of some of the roughness, not all of it, just some of it and to blend some of those areas together a little bit more. And let's go back and 
Make a little shadow here. They're blending stuff again. A few more wrinkles. Give it a shot, see what you think and what you like. And if you want to, you can send me an email and show me what you did. Have a great day. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to make a blending stuff. All right, so we've got a piece of paper. It's about three inches wide and probably about six inches long. It's actually just a piece of my drawing paper that I dirt elephant drawing on. And you also need a little piece of tape. Right. So here we go. All you need to do is kind of start by making a little bit of a triangle. Alright, like that. And then we're going to roll that across. We're trying to make a cone. Okay, just like an ice cream cone. Try to roll it. It's a little bit easier once you get it started. All right. And kind of make it, try to tighten it a little bit on the end as you go. Um, the tighter it is, the better it'll work. And just roll it up. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to make something that we can blend with. And then you take a little piece of tape and you put it across where you rolled it together tail of the, the paper there, and you have a blending stuff. So they work just the same as the ones you buy at the store. Um, you can you really use pretty much any kind of paper. Your drawing paper works a little bit better because it's stiffer and it has a texture to it. Okay. So there you go. There's a blending stub. All right. Have a good day.